Well, welcome. Thank you to everyone who's here physically and virtually. Uh, my name is Nathan Moffat. I am Director of Platform Marketing at NetApp, and I am joined today by my two esteemed colleagues on the technical side. I've got Alex Sammer, who's a member of our product ops organization focused on all flash arrays. And I'm also joined by Skip Shapiro, who is a part of our TME organization. Quick note for those of you who are not familiar with the NetApp lingo, we do love our three-letter acronyms. TME is a technical marketing engineer. And what that actually means is it's someone who is responsible for not only for product management type functions, they're also responsible for uh, delivering and developing best practices, doing testing. So it covers a wide gamut of, of things, everything from the nuts and bolts to how we make sure we deliver an articulate message out the door that's actually factual. So as we go through this, just be aware that these guys are definitely mired in it, have had it in the labs up and running, and would love to hear any questions that you have as we go through this. So to start off with, from an agenda standpoint, we're going to do a quick introduction of NetApp, talk a little bit about flash design considerations and what it is that we think about as we're designing flash products. And then we're going to go right into the meat of the conversation, talking first about our virtual storage tiering technology. That's our flash uh, caching technologies that we have from a hybrid standpoint. And then we're going to actually go into our all flash arrays as we talk about what we're doing there. Uh, that's going to look at both the EF540 flash array, which is currently shipping, and we'll talk a little bit about Flash Ray, which is our all flash array that will be coming out later this year with beta happening later this summer. And then we'll do a little bit of closing and any additional questions that come up through the conversation, we'll cover there. So a little bit of background about NetApp. Who is NetApp? What do we do? We're a Fortune 500 company, uh, over $6 billion in revenue with 13,000 employees across 150 different countries. Our main goal is to design solutions that are focused on storage and data management, to deliver solutions that help customers drive their businesses further faster. And it's really designed around three principles, three dimensions that we look at, speed, economics, and scale. That's one of the, those are the three things that drive our organization overall. And if we take a look at what that means to us from a, a history perspective, from 20 years of innovation and what we've been doing, that's led us to drive a lot of first within the industry. So whether that be the first storage operating system with Waffle, right, Anywhere File Layout, to the first unified platform, which is probably what we're best known for is a NAS SAN combined platform, to the first iSCSI array, as well as now what we're doing within clustering with non-disruptive operations. And across the board, this has allowed us to become number one in terms of storage operating systems, number one in terms of OEM storage sales, and we actually just recently were named to Forbes' most innovative companies list as well. Now, when I think about design innovation, where we're going now, what's important to us today, Flash is obviously a key component of that. If it wasn't a key component of that, you'd have probably some very big questions for us as a storage company. Flash is something that's obviously hitting the market very hard. And depending on who you talk to, even though Flash is currently probably only about one, maybe 3% of most customers' environments, the reality is that the growth rate on that, even in just SSD, is over a 40% CAGR right now, compounding annual growth rate. And it's just taking off like a rocket. And that's just SSD. If we factor in things like PCIe, it's going up even faster. So it's a part of every conversation that we're involved in. The question is, why Flash? Why is it important to a customer? Why are they looking at deploying it? Why do you guys care about Flash? Why is it important to you? From a value standpoint, obviously the key thing that we hear most about is increased speed and response time. So minimizing latency, allowing an application to get its data faster, more effectively, so it can tra uh, process transactions at a faster rate to drive business operations faster. Now, while that's the key value that we typically see, it's interesting, when we talk to customers, the true value statement isn't always there. It's actually currently split, call it 25, 25, 25, 25, across speed and performance, overall IT efficiency, lowering of costs, increased reliability, which is kind of an interesting factor when you think about SSDs, but that's where everybody's kind of trending, and then simplicity, density story. So when I look at that and I think about why it is that people are looking at these values and what it means, first and foremost around increased speed and responsiveness, the fact of the matter is, is that with Flash you can hit your IOPS desires a lot more effectively. There's less need to over-provision disks. So as you guys probably very well know, right, and it's something you've heard about time and time again, with traditional hard drives, they have a very good value, but we're pushing them about as far as you can go. 
And as a matter of fact, when storage companies design operating systems now, one of the things they build in is how do you actually make a hard drive do an unnatural act? How do you actually coalesce write operations, read operations, so you can get disk to perform as effectively as possible without having to do things like short stroking? But the reality is you can only push that so far. There's only so far you can make a hard disk actually work good since it's got moving components on it. And that's led people to move to flash, to actually be able to hit the provisioning or to hit the performance requirements without having to over provision. Now the other benefit I mentioned was IT efficiency. So by limiting that over provisioning, you're actually reducing the effective, the material dollar per IOPS cost of the storage platform. So bringing it much more in line with what a customer would actually expect versus having to deploy a lot of disk and not thinking about what the aggregate cost is to get their current IOPS requirements. And then from a green standpoint, it's really about less space and less power being needed. So that's high level. That's why people are looking at it. But as you guys know, as you guys are probably extremely well versed in, there's a lot more behind that conversation. Flash is not a panacea. Flash is not something you just deploy and expect it to immediately solve all of your problems to solve world hunger. It's just not going to happen. You have to take a careful consideration about how it is that you want to deploy it and where it is that you want to deploy it. And that's actually something that really drives us from a NetApp standpoint around how we decide what storage we want to put out there, what our design considerations are, what products we take to market, and what functionality is included. At a high level, again, this is some just stuff that you would have asked over the years in general as you were designing a, sto designing a storage infrastructure, but now need to apply to Flash, which is what workloads are actually underperforming? Which ones are actually going to benefit from increased speed or lower latency? Do file shares really require sub-millisecond latency? Probably not. So there's careful considerations that need to actually go into that. Further, where's your bottleneck? Where is it within your storage infrastructure from server to storage that you're actually seeing the slowdown? Because that's going to be a design consideration about how and where you, you actually deploy your flash. And then, of course, there are the other things around desired benefits. You know, what is it that you're actually trying to achieve in terms of IOPS? Is it read performance increases? Is it write performance increases? Is there a latency factor, a cost reduction, that's actual storage or overall environmental TCO that you're looking to achieve? These are things that drive us in terms of how we build out that portfolio. And finally, how much flash do I need? Pricing is coming down on flash. As a matter of fact, we anticipate there's going to be a very steep decline in flash prices, SSD prices, over the next several years. Very steep. But the reality is it's still expensive. So figuring out how much you want to deploy is critical. And actually what the working set size is that you're looking to accelerate, and how long is that data hot? How often is it being actually used versus being cold data that's going to sit there and really doesn't benefit from the need of actually storing it on flash? So these are the things that we take a look at as we're figuring out what we want to deploy into customers' environments and what the overall portfolio needs to look like. And the reality is for us, when we take a look at this, it's not one solution fits all. It truly is a mix of solutions. And we need to be able to offer to customers, to people like you, a portfolio of solutions so you can make the right choice to place based on the deployment criteria that you're looking at. It can't just be, here's an all-flash array that will solve every one of your problems. It can't be, here's a hybrid array that will solve every one of your problems. It's going to be a mix and match depending on what's going on. So for us, we offer hybrid arrays with our FAS, V-series, and E-series systems, which we'll be talking about. We also have all flash arrays where that's necessary. And we also have alliances within the server caching uh, side as well to make sure that we can offer that end-to-end -end functionality around flash. Now the final comment I'll make, or two final comments I'll make, is one is that when I think about this and what this actually means for us from a deployment standpoint is we actually have across the portfolio deployed over 36 petabytes worth of flash to date. And it's actually getting up closer to 40. So that's actually allowed us to stand up pretty high within the deployment levels of the overall industry and the amount of flash that's actually been pushed out into the industry. Quite a bit that's out there that's got NetApp on it. And now, if I make a final point here, when we think about how we're going to actually take this storage out, how we're actually going to deploy it and what we want to do with it, we currently divide our thinking into two areas, two key areas that we focus on. First is a shared storage infrastructure, a shared virtual infrastructure. This is going to be an infrastructure where the 
breadth of applications running on top of the storage platform may be variable. It may be a wide variety of them, or if you're a service provider, a cloud provider, it could be one that changes dynamically at a moment's notice. So you don't know exactly when or what's going to be on there. And that's going to be the first piece that we talk about with Skip that'll include the different things we're doing across the stack for a hybrid standpoint. The second thing we look at is dedicated storage for workloads, for applications that have a very specific need and a very specific storage platform that's been designed and laid out for them. In those cases, that's where we're going to be looking at our E-series as well as our all-flash arrays, more persistent storage, where we know that that data needs to be hot all the time. It needs to be actively ready to be processed quickly up the stack. And that'll be the piece that we cover with Alex as we go into the second portion of the conversation.